Comfort my people and calm all your fear. The day of salvation. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her that, that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A, a, a voice of one calling. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a, a, a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made, made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. You who, who bring good news to Zion, go up, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to, to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, see that the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. In the first 39 chapters of Isaiah, we see God's warnings of judgment. But then in chapter 40, the tone totally shifts, and it becomes a, a tone of more comfort and blessing, full of, a com- full of the glory of God. Comfort, yes, comfort my people. Isaiah knew what it was to uh, warn and instruct God's people, but the Lord also wanted his people to receive that comfort. 1 Corinthians 1, 3 speaks of our Lord as the God of all comfort. And he wants his messengers to speak comfort to his people. I don't know about you, but I I can think of many times when I went to a church or a Bible study and I went in with a very heavy heart about something. I was worried. I was grieved. I was feeling guilty about a sin I committed. I just didn't feel right. And God knows that we carry that heaviness with us, and he desires to bring us comfort. As one preacher put it, preach to the broken hearts, and you will never lack an audience. And then the second part of this is, O Zion, you who bring good tidings. You know, when we think about the word tidings, you know, I thought, well, I know what that means. It means news. It means information. You watch ABC, NBC, CBS, you don't get any good tidings, very little. It's all bad news. But we have good news. Isaiah speaks of a message so great, tidings so good, that they must be spread as widely as possible. It's a message that should be shouted out. Lift up your voice with strength. Behold, the Lord shall come with a strong hand. We will behold the fact that he is returning and we will behold his loving care as a shepherd. Silence the silence, silence sounds of war and all destruction and confusion. Lord, in a season when every heart should be happy and light, many of us are struggling with the heaviness of life burdens that steal the joy right out of our stockings. Tragedy arrives as innocent victims suffer and an inner voice whispers, be afraid. We need your peace, Jesus. We confess that our hearts are too often filled with wonder of a different kind, wondering when the bills will be paid, when the terror will stop, when rest will come. Will it ever? Is this message still true? In a world where worry, not peace, prevails, stir up that good news again. This Advent, make it real in our hearts. Never have we needed your joy and peace more than now. Thank you for the gift of Jesus, our Emmanuel, the Word made flesh. 
We not only need your peace and joy, Lord, we crave it. You've promised rest for the weary, victory for the battle-scarred, peace for the anxious, and acceptance for the broken-hearted. Not just at Advent, but every day of our year. Your name is still called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. We know that peace on earth can only come when hearts find peace with you. You are still our joy. You are still our peace. You are no longer a babe in the manger. You are Lord of lords and King of kings. And we still celebrate you as Lord, this Christmas and always. Amen. Almighty God, you pour on us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oh,